Thank you. Nice. Next stop, the moon. You're looking at a new lunar lander taking off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida last night. The lander, named Athena, was built by Houston-based Intuitive Machines. And this is all part of NASA's Artemis mission, which seeks to establish a long-term human presence on the moon. For more on this, I'm joined by the spokesperson for Intuitive Machines, Leroy Chow. You should recognize him. He's also a former NASA astronaut and commander on the International Space Station and does such a great job in helping us understand technically what's happening up there. Uh, great to have you with us. How, from your point of view, did the launch go last night? Looked like a flawless launch and a uh, flawless insertion. So Intuitive Machines Athena lander is on its way to the moon. Everything looked like it went really well. You know, while we were listening and watching, we noticed that there were some communication issues. Do you know if those issues with the spacecraft have been fully resolved? Yeah, I saw that too. And uh, it looked like there were some issues on the deep space network side. Uh, they had to reboot some computers, I believe, on that side, and then uh, they were able to establish contact with the spacecraft. I haven't heard any updates this morning. I believe that means that everything is going well and they're in good contact with the spacecraft. And help us understand what this mission is all about, because it's not just this one trip up and around the moon. It's part of a larger and more long-term initiative. So what's happening? Oh, absolutely. So Intuitive Machines, they're, they're in kind of a unique position because they're going to their plan to provide services on the lunar surface for other customers, including NASA and commercial customers. And that includes delivery of things to the moon. That means uh, data coverage, you know, network coverage, power, uh, you know, other services as things evolve. And so this vehicle actually carries a bunch of exciting payloads. It carries a NASA payload, which is a drill. Uh, it's going to drill down about one meter, about three feet pull up a core sample of the of the regolith and have it analyzed by an onboard mass spectrometer to look for water and other uh, important volatiles there in the lunar surface. It features two rovers, two commercial rovers that are going to be deployed and uh, they're going to traverse around the area of the landing near the South Pole there, which will also be a first. It features a hopper, which is uh, really exciting. Uh, it's named Grace after Grace Hopper, who was a, a pioneering mathematician and helped pioneer the first practical computer, the UNIVAC, which also was key to NASA's programs, including the moon landing. And uh, it's going to traverse up to around two kilometers away with a rocket engine. It's going to fly around uh, just, you know, a little bit above the surface of the Earth. And it's a demonstrator to show that they would be able to do this in the future to practically explore easily other craters or other sites, uh, you know, during future missions. It's also got a, a Nokia experiment that's going to generate a, a set, or set up a 4G network to demonstrate uh, the first connectivity between the hopper and the lander. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And also some other payloads, including from Columbia Sportswear. They're going to be evaluating some of their materials they use for clothing to wow. see about the insulated properties uh, on the moon. So a lot of different efforts as part of this lander. Um, this is the second lunar lander, though. What is the contingency plan if something similar happens to the first lunar lander, which tipped over? Can I get back right. up? So several months ago, uh, Intuitive Machines did land a, a similar Nova C lander uh, for the first time, basically mostly to demonstrate that they could land. And it was the first commercial lander to successfully soft land on the moon. Now, they did have an issue with an instrument that was going to tell it more precisely what its altitude was, a later laser altimeter, basically a LIDAR. And uh, that instrument had an issue. They were able to use a backup, uh, another instrument not intended for that as a backup. It wasn't as accurate. Consequently, they uh, didn't hit, they didn't impact as softly as they had wanted. And unfortunately, one of the landing legs broke off and the vehicle tipped over. But they were still able to get a signal back uh, and able to establish communication with it, thus becoming the first uh, you know, commercial company to do that. But uh, this this lander, they, they have the issue resolved and it should be fine. And, uh, you know, this is care. This lander is carrying a lot of payloads on it, a lot more payload. And so we'll be uh, looking forward and with our fingers crossed. Uh, you and me both. This is the benefit of math, science and, and experts like you who get all this stuff done. Leroy Chow, great to have you give us some insight from Houston this morning. We appreciate you waking up with us.